Women account for about one half of the world's population. They do two thirds of the world's work and yet receive only one tenth of the world's income and own less than one percent of the world's property. In this village near River Niger in Mali, West Africa, another day of work begins. These women know that the grinding must be done early in the morning in order to accommodate the rest of the work that will have to get done before the day is over. <laughs> Among many other chores, they will also have to work in the fields, cook the meal for the family and take care of the children. And these tasks will have to be carried out with simple primitive tools, without the help of modern technology or equipment. Although situations may vary from one region to another, in most parts of the third world, a large number of women perform back-breaking, labor-intensive jobs. They must supplement the family's income in order to survive. In the Bolivian highlands, women have traditionally been and continue to be the driving force in the marketing of goods and agricultural products grown in the area. It is market day in the small town of Palcoco, located at 12,000 feet above sea level in the Altiplano, the vast plateau of the Andes Mountains, home of the ancient Aymara culture. <laughs> Some of these women come here to sell surplus produce, but others are professional traders with excellent business abilities that have been developed for generations. Throughout the Third World, women merchants represent a considerable economic force. In the southern part of Asia, in the Caribbean and in West Africa, women handle between 70 and 90 percent of the domestic farm and marine produce. Many are small-scale traders who face great difficulties transporting their goods to the marketplace. Roads are either poor or non-existent, and when transportation is available, the cost is often too high for them to afford. While the men are engaged in many different types of work, it is the women who usually bear the main responsibility of taking produce to market. Women are a central component in the economic life of any country. It is clear that economic programs aim 
at improving the quality of life in poor societies will not accomplish their objectives fully unless they take into consideration the total contribution of women. But in the third world, most of the work women do is not remunerated with money. It does not appear in the statistics and is often ignored by the economic planners. As a result, the economies of these countries suffer because they do not address the specific needs of women who are half of their productive workforce. Easy tasks in the lives of these women. There are no washing machines, no piped water, no electric stoves. Women have to walk for miles and spend long hours searching for firewood and collecting water. Running a household requires a tremendous effort which consumes most of their energy and makes them more prone to disease. The job must be done under great pressure. There is never time to plan for the future. Planners often see women who are not part of the public sector as traditional, conservative, and irrelevant with respect to the process of change, perhaps even a, a break to the process of change, because they're seen as housewives, as mothers, and not as movers in the, in the public sector. But because they are mothers, and because they are the organizers, the administrators of the household, certainly they have influence. They may not have public influence, but they certainly have private influence that can extend to the public sector. At home, women make important decisions that shape the future of their families. They decide what the family eats, who goes to school, who stays behind to work in the fields. They start off the life habits of their children, and they have a determinant role in the family's health and nutritional status. The education and awareness of women in these areas can affect the health conditions in the entire country. But the women must themselves be taught so that their contribution can be most productive. There have been projects that have, get, have gotten to women through health centers, for example, through health centers for children, that have educated the women about nutrition through the children, without saying, okay, we're going to have courses for these women to get these women to have a greater sense of um, improved behavior. Okay, well, we won't say these are courses for women. We will say that these are ways in which we can teach these women to better the nutrition of their children. Women's work is vastly underestimated in agriculture. In many parts of the world, we should actually talk of farmers and their husbands. Yeah. 
more than half of the food consumed in the developing world is produced by women. Yet, they often do not have legal title to the land, do not qualify for credit to obtain seeds, fertilizers, and other farm inputs, and most agricultural training and technology is directed to the needs of men. In the Nandi district of Kenya, 25 women organized themselves as a group three years ago. They decided to farm the land and share the profits. They have already bought a farm and have ambitious plans for the future. Women can improve their situation by pulling together their potential, their inventiveness, their creativity and their resources. Groups offer agricultural instructors the opportunity to talk to women collectively rather than individually and multiply the effect of their advice. And by instructing groups of women about their work, the teacher can also introduce other critical issues – nutrition, family planning, sanitation, health. You know, women making money, if you compare to men, it is better because women is the homemaker. There are so many things we need in the, in the home that a man cannot afford to buy. Small, small things. Maybe food, maybe baby dresses, maybe tablecloths. Over one third of women in the world are illiterate. In some countries, the female illiteracy rate exceeds 90% and development planners must consider this. Educating girls is one of the best investments any country can make in its economic growth and welfare, even if the girls never enter the labor market. Most girls eventually become mothers and their influence will be extended through their children for generations to come. Sometimes, the third world is perceived as an indistinct mass of people. But the fact is that there are immense differences. The standards of living and access to opportunities vary from country to country and also within nations. This applies to women as well. In the medium and bigger cities of the third world, such as Bangkok in Thailand, some women have broken into the professional market. I work at the Bangkok Post and I report on the city. Anything that happens to the city, like the floods or um, slum evictions, squatters, sometimes traffic. Kamul Wan Samson Suk has worked at the Bangkok Post newspaper for about 10 years writing about the life of her city and her people. I think it's true that most women in Thailand work as well as look after the household. Maybe they don't work in offices as such in the Western world, but they still continue to work to help their family. Many women in Thailand are engaged in food growing and selling. <laughs> the 
this colorful market near Bangkok has a tremendous economic significance for this region. Huge amounts of produce are brought here to be sold. Economic development and industrialization in Thailand have had mixed effects on the work and living conditions of women. Over the past few years, the participation of both the rural and urban women in the labor force has gradually increased. But while the female participation in the labor market has risen, in rural areas, women are still overburdened and underpaid. Most of the merchants um, paddling the, the boat are women, and the husband would be working at the farm. I asked her um, how long that she worked, and she said she started off working at about eight and finishes around two, paddling her canoe, her boat, and selling the goods and then going home to prepare the new lot for the next day. Professional women working in society would probably have less chance of being in the head of the department, simply because um, sometimes they're being barred by the men to come up uh, to the top level. I don't think I will be able to become an editor in the newspaper because there's lots of um, ways and procedures of how you can obtain a good story and often is by uh, getting the stories in the bars and night cl nightclubs and often um, when they think of um, sending you to a town uh, to do a story they would uh, would not think of sending a woman there because um, simply sh they don't want women to walk around in bars. There are direct links between the problems confronting Kamal Wan Sam Sam Suk, the journalist in Bangkok, and the struggle for equality in the labor market being carried out by women here in New York or in any other city of the industrialized nations. Professional women all over the world must face enormous obstacles for career advancement in a male-dominated society. By and large, women remain underrepresented in decision-making jobs. The situation is even worse in developing countries, where professional women account for a very small portion of their population. also strikes the urban areas of the third world and the conditions in the cities are sometimes worse than in the countryside. In the cities, women are concentrated in low-paid and marginal jobs. In these countries, many women's rights organizations are led by affluent women in the cities who are realizing that the situation of women as a whole will not improve unless all women are taken into consideration. As you know, about three quarters of women in India live in rural areas. And you are quite right in saying that this uh, movement is urban-based and perhaps even elite-led. Uh, also, uh, there is in the urban-based women's movement, a self-consciousness, a sort of self-consciousness about imposing their views on uh, development and on, you might say, liberation of women, imposing their views on rural women. Um, this is also a democratic setup, and we are all very sensitive to the fact that no one group's views should be imposed on another group. In Rajasthan, India, 
women care for the milk producing animals. In this region, dairy products represent a major economic contribution to every household, and women are responsible for this work. However, traditionally, it was the men who went to the market to sell the produce. But recently, a development aid project organized dairy cooperatives on a village basis, allowing the producers, the women, to sell the milk and collect the cash payments. This has brought about great change throughout this rural setting. The social status of women has been enhanced because they now have leverage over the family finances and participate more in the decision-making process of their community. Urban women have made conscious efforts to link up with rural women and link up in a, um, in a friendly and organic manner. Um, it might sound uh, as if there are no problems, but there are several problems and there are cultural and class problems in this. However, these links are being, are being forged and the response from the rural areas is absolutely overwhelming. And what urban women have realized is that rural women were already into a women's movement of their own. It's just that perhaps we did not hear of it. They didn't hear of, of how we are feeling, but there is convergence. Often than not, women in the third world are themselves unaware of the crucial role they play within their societies. There is a need to increase this awareness, not only by women, but by governments and development planners as well. There is also a need for change and adaptation of traditional ways that keep women from participating fully in the economic life of their countries. This situation affects women all over the world, both in the developing nations and in the industrialized countries. I'll talk about India. There is a marriage fixation in this country. Every girl who is born and raised is told from absolutely childhood, I think, that she's um, actually been born in order to get married. Basically, it's not said as uh, sharply as this, but um, almost everything to her uh, points to the fact that she will get married. Therefore, all orientation is towards this event that is to take place. <laughs> Parents feel under tremendous pressure to uh, make sure that girls do get married. And ours is not a society where women and uh, where boys and girls meet frequently. So, given this fact on the one hand, and given the uh, great pressure on marriage on the other, parents have um, have traditionally arranged marriages, and it still continues here. And with it, of course, you know, goes dowry. The whole question of dowry, which uh, uh, to um, I mean, which I think is an index of um, the greatest. Uh, is an index of women's lack of valuation in this society because I as a human being cannot go uh, to another household, cannot 
marry a man unless I, I am accompanied by material goods, by boxes full of this, that and the other. Throughout the Third World, statues of women convey their participation in the development of their societies. But recognition should not stop at building monuments unless women are fully integrated into the economic systems of their nations, the chances for progress are very slim. If women were given the ability to have greater access to all of the roles of the society, as opposed to only a restricted number of them, they would be able to participate in the decision-making processes. Maybe their, their socialization that is oriented toward um, pretty humanistic values values centered around improving the life of the family, they could translate those values to larger social issues, to improving the life of the, the entire society. At different levels of development, the nations of the Third World are striving for economic progress. But the perspectives for progress in any country are diminished when the roles that women play in their societies are not fully recognized. There is now growing international awareness of this problem and of the need to confront it. Ignoring women is overlooking half the human resources, and no country can afford the luxury of wasting its resources.